What's up guys? It's me, Sir Ernest, and today we're going to talk about conservation of energy. So in this video, we're going to consider only your mechanical energy. So let's recall that, for example, a particle moved from one point to another. Okay, the total work done. is just the integral of the force with respect to x from position 1 to position 2 so you will remember that this is in what this is in one dimension and work kinetic energy theorem says that this is equal to delta t where t is your kinetic energy so this is just the difference between the final kinetic energy minus the kinetic energy initially now if for example if f is conservative so that means the force is equal to the negative derivative of your potential energy with respect to x So that means the work done by your conservative force, which is equal to the negative delta u, is equal to delta t. So again, negative delta, uh, delta u will be the potential energy after the displacement minus the potential energy for the displacement and this is equal to t2 minus t1 so rearranging this we now have t1 plus u1 and this is equal to t2 plus u2 so you will notice that at, if at condition 1 and condition 2 the sum of your kinetic and potential energy are the same. We actually call this the total energy E. More specifically, we're looking at the total mechanical energy. And you will notice that it's the same for condition 1 and condition 2. So this is a constant. So this statement is actually what we call the conservation of energy. Okay? And that is why also we call these kinds of forces as conservative. Because remember that if this is only valid or conservation of energy is only valid only if the force acting on the particle that causes this displacement or that does the work is conservative okay now this constant t as i mentioned uh, stems from the fact that the force involved is only a function of position x of the particle and, con and consequently can be derived from a corresponding potential energy u which is a function of x okay so that's why it's called conservative force now because for example since kinetic energy is equal to one half m v squared therefore the total energy will now be equal to the one half mv squared plus some potential energy u which is a function of x so from here the velocity v or the speed v which is the derivative of position with respect to x or with respect to time can be determined as 
plus or minus square root of 2m, 2 over m, times e minus the potential energy at position u. And by integrating this, you now have integral of dx over plus or minus square root of 2 over m times e minus u as a function of x. And is equal to t minus t naught. Now these two equations, this equation and this equation tells us several things. First, the velocity is real only only if the potential energy, so function of x, is less than e. So in other words, the particle is confined within the regions for which this relationship between potential energy and total energy is satisfied. So we call this the allowed regions. Okay? Also, the when the particle stops, let's say this is equal to zero. Okay? So if V is equal to zero, the potential energy will approach the total energy. We call this point the turning point. Okay, so let's illustrate this by using this simple graphical representation. So for example, we have your a potential energy curve. So if you have your potential energy curve, and let's say the curve is defined like this. And let's say the energy of a particle, wherever this is a field. So let's say a particle only has this amount of energy. Okay, so you will notice here that we can define the allowable regions wherein we define this x1 and x2 because at x1 the kinetic and the potential energy is equal to the total energy and so in so as in x2 so that means these parts are your forbidden regions and the particle will only be allowed to exist within the boundary of x1 and x2. And these points are your turning points. So again, this is your classical mechanics. So uh, this is only valid in a classical system. But of course, if you're going to talk about quantum mechanical systems, particles that are very, very small, okay, a part of this forbidden region can also be considered to be an allowed region by uh, considering the probability functions or the probability wave, func wave function or the probability of your particle to be found within this, within, uh, inside this forbidden region. But that's beyond the scope of this class. Okay, so that's all for now. That's for conservation of energy. And in the next video, we're going to talk about uh, reading potential energy curves. Okay, so for now, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.